Hi everybody, I'm Amy and today I am going to be dyeing this cotton Ada which has come from little freebie kits that came with magazines and, and things that I've had in my collection for a long, long, long time. Including this little one that I've actually cross-stitched and never did anything with. This one came from a Happy Millennium kit. So that gives you an idea of how long it's been in there and just a little bit of floss to dye. Now this has all been soaking in here which is plain tap water, a little bit of salt and a little bit of soda ash. I'm going to be using these four fiber, re fiber reactive dyes. Uh, this one is Sweet Pea here, this one is Wedgwood's Blue, this one is Sea Glass and this one is Lavender. Now I have just dissolved the tiniest bit of dye in these, like just the, the edge, I've just dipped the edge of the teaspoon in the pots with a little bit of water. Uh, so what I want to do is like a tie dye effect on this. So I don't, I don't want it to be a solid colour, I want it to be a bit patchy and make it look a bit interesting. So just screw it up and then add a little bit of white acrylic yarn to this just to try and hold it in place. I'm not doing a very good job of this. Yeah. Try and hold it in place. You make some resist points on this. So it's a little bit, a little bit like when you tie dye. So this one, I'm going to pop into what was this one? Uh, the lavender. Break it down. There we go. I think I might add just a little bit more water. This is just plain warm tap water. Doesn't have to be too warm. There we go. So, that. I'm going to do the same with all of these. Just going to screw them up and create little resist points on them to hopefully try and create a more interesting and textured Colour. I'll put this one in in there with sweet pea. Not sweet pea, sea glass. That was it. A little bit more water, top it up. There we go. Now these jars and this spoon are dedicated for dyeing, so I don't use them uh, for any food preparation. So I've got, and I've got my cotton fire, cotton. Plus, I think I'm going to do the same with this. Just fold it up. I can go in wedge with blue. Let's go in this one. Right, I'm going to try rolling this one up, I think. Just to make it a little bit more, just to make it a bit different. So with tie dye, the dif different ways you roll up your, your your fabric and uh, add your elastic bands or your resists it make, creates different patterns so this should hopefully look a bit different from the screwed up ones that we did put that in there This last one, the, the picture that I did, I'm just going to put in straight like that. And a bit more. See how different this one is that hasn't got anything to tie it up. There we go. Okay. These need to be left in a cool place for a minimum of six hours. I will probably leave these a lot longer than six hours. Um, last time I did cotton dyeing, it was about two days. So probably be around about that time. 
as well. Uh, the longer the longer you leave the dye, the, the dye, the, the better. So we'll see these in a couple of days. See how they turn. So these have been sitting in the dye for nearly a week now. So let's see what they all look like. Now I'm just going to rinse these in some, some cool tap water. This is just plain tap water. This one. Oh, look at that. That is a beautiful effect there. This one doesn't look like it looks pretty solid to me. And the last one, I folded this one and the other two were sort of scrunched up, whereas this one was folded. Let's see. Oh, that's, that's nice. You can see some lines in there. I wonder, and I've got the thread as well. I, oh, looks like we do have a little bit of um, resist colour in there. You can see there's some perla patches and nice dark patches. So I'm just going to keep, just going to keep washing these with a little bit of fairy liquid, just in, just to make sure I get all the excess dye out of this, and then I can hang them up to dry. Wow, I am so impressed with how this little experiment has turned out. Uh, you can see every piece of fabric is different. Uh, I've got this one at the top, which was dyed with uh, sea glass, and that's very, very. You can see it's very subtle differences there. It was that one was screwed up and just tied loosely with some yarn. Uh, this one was dyed with lavender, and, and this one was also screwed up, but I tied it quite tightly. And you can see there's lots of uh, resist marks around there, which I love. Uh, uh, this piece and the cotton was dyed with Wedgwood Blue. Uh, this one I folded up so you can see the resist lines there. And also this, this would have been, this corner would have been in the middle of uh, the little fabric bundle. So you can see there's barely any dye there, but around the edges is where uh, most of the dye is, which again, I think looks really pretty. And the cotton, while it is a bit of a mess at the moment, you can still see there's um, some white resist marks there and got some dark blue and around in it as well, some pale blue. Oh, I think I really like how that's turned out. I can't wait to, to sew with it. And then we've got this last one here, which was dyed with sweet pea, and I just put that in loosely, and it's come out uh, pretty solid. I can't wait to get some more Ada and do some more experimenting with it. I um, really love how these have turned out and I just can't wait to do some more. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please click like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I aim to produce a new dyeing tutorial every Monday. I like to experiment with different yarn bases, different fabrics, different dyes and techniques. So every video has something different. Thank you so much for watching.